For the three research designs we need to know in VCE psychology, you need to be able to do three things. First of all, explain how each of them operate. Secondly, identify an advantage compared to alternatives. And finally, identify a limitation compared to alternatives. Independent groups is the simplest design where we simply allocate each of our subjects to either the control condition or the experimental condition. In other words, they're either exposed to the IV or they're not exposed to the IV. They simply serve as a baseline measure for comparison. Importantly, when you are identifying an advantage of the method, you need to compare it to an alternative to really add weight to your response. So in terms of independent groups, we don't have to worry about an order effect as opposed to repeated measures. And if you're asked for an advantage in comparison to match pairs, you'd say that it is more time and cost effective because we don't have to actually um, allocate resources for the actual pre-matching process. In terms of limitations, particularly when we have smallish sample sizes, it is the least effective in controlling participant-related variables, i.e. less effective than both match pairs and repeated measures. In a match pairs design, what we do is we pre-test subjects based on a characteristic of interest. The simplest way of doing this would be something like age and gender. If it had to do with memory, we could do a pre-test on short-term memory capacity. We could even look at IQ tests, personality tests, etc. So we pair you up based on shared characteristics of interest that will ultimately affect the results. And then a member from each pair is either allocated to the control or the experimental condition, ensuring that we have relatively equivalent groups. Match pairs is more effective in controlling participant-related variables than the independent groups design. But a limitation is, particularly when we match people based purely on things like age and gender, there might be other factors that come into play that might affect the DV. For instance, if we were looking at the impact of sleep deprivation on memory, then things like a person's short-term memory capacity will influence the result, along with their normal sleep routine in terms of how many hours they generally get. When a repeated measures design is used, participants are involved in both the control condition where they're not exposed to the IV and the experimental condition where they are exposed to the IV and this enables a comparison between the results. The advantage of this is we don't have to worry about participant related variables so it is the most effective of the three because it actually eliminates participant related variables. The major limitation is we can potentially have an order effect if we don't counterbalance. An order effect has occurred when we have the sequence in which the conditions were performed, that is control and experimental, so no IV and IV, has actually affected the performance on the latter task. This would be a confounding variable that has systematically affected the DV throughout the experiment. And it can go two ways. The practice of actually doing a task prior could result in an improvement. So rather than the manipulation of the IV, being exposed to the IV affecting the results, it could be the mere act of actually completing a similar task, both pre and then post test. An example of this would be giving subjects a pre test under the control condition, a pre IQ test. And then we expose them to some drug that some pharmaceutical company claims increases um, intelligence. And then we actually exposed them to the drug, the IV, and gave them a post-test that was very similar to the pre-test. That might actually go better from the experience gained of doing the initial pre-test. So therefore, we're unsure of if it's the actual drug, the IV, that's affected their result. In other words, the improvement in IQ score, or was it merely the actual practice of it doing prior? Thus, again, this would be a confounding variable because that practice, that variable has been confounded or confused in terms of its impact on the DV. So how do we overcome that? We counterbalance. We get half the subjects to do the control condition first and the other half to do the experimental condition first and then we swap so that if there is a practice effect, 
half will go better on the control condition and the other half will go better on the experimental condition therefore the improvement will be cancelled out. So for visual emphasis if we are counterbalancing half will do the control condition first half will do the experimental condition first and then they swap. So those half of our participants that did the control condition first they're now going to do the experimental condition second and those subjects that did the experimental condition first they're now going to do the control condition so that if there is a practice effect half will go better under the experimental condition half will go better under the control condition therefore the two groups in terms of improvement the results will cancel each other out.